because yes, there was no there was nobody on your side of the family no, when I was going no, through no. the work no, that we I did. No, I had my son Edward named after my father, mm -hmm. and then I had named uh, uh, Willie was named after his father. Well, isn't it Edward Mark? Mark, yes, Mark I gave is from two names. Mark Edward, you know, Mark. Margaret. No, it was Manas Arden, my father, so that's what I gave him, Manas Arden, you know, mm -hmm. so, and uh, Sarah is m named after my son of his mother, mm -hmm. so, but my, I have name for my mother and my father by my sisters. Mm -hmm. Does your daughter keep kosher? No, she used to. Did she? And then after he left her with the three kids, he, she... The date is November 8, 1995. The survivor's name is Toby Wiener, T-O-B-Y-W-I-E-N-E-R. Maiden name is Gewurz, G-E-V-U-R-T-Z. The interviewer is Dale Hannon. The city is North Miami Beach. The state is Florida. The country is the United States and this is being done in English. Tape one. My name is Dale Hannon. Today's date is November 8, 1995. I am conducting an interview with Mrs. Toby Wiener. The interview is being conducted in North Miami Beach, Florida, United States of America. Please give me your name and the spelling of your name. My name is Toby Wiener, W-I-E-N-E-R. What was your name at birth, and spell it, please? It was Toby Gewurz, G-E-V-U-R-T-Z. What is your birth date? April 20th, 1928. And how old are you? Now I'm 47, 67. Please tell me the name of the city where you were born, and spell it, please. It was... Uh, at, at that time, when I was born, was Romania. It was Holmi. And how do you spell it? H O L M E U. Um, I, I think. Okay. Please describe to me your pre war life. Before the war. Before the war. Well, uh, we was a beautiful Jewish family with five, five children, my mother, father, and uh, my life was beautiful because I was with them. And everything was really wonderful till the Nazis, till the Nazis came in. Tell me about your family. You had five, there were five children? Yes, I had five sisters. We were five sisters. And their names, please? Uh, the, the older one was Goldie. The second was Brochy, Blanche. Of course, in America, they changed the name. Cecilia, Toby, that was me. And then I had a sister, Javi. And what were your parents' names? My mother's name was Margaret Gewurz, and my father's name was Edmund Gewurz. The what? Jewish was Manasaran. They were cousins. That's your why both names was Gewurz. All right, your parents were cousins. Yes. Okay, tell me about your family life. My family life was, was very nice. Uh, religious family, working hard, my father and my mother. And uh, my, they tried very hard to make a living, and everything was going pretty well. What kind of work did your parents do? My father was a butcher, and he had a kosher butcher store and a trafer butcher store. And my mother used to help him. And my grandparents used to live for a while with us till they didn't, till they died. Okay, what kind of work did your mother do? 
My mother was a housewife and also helped my father. What did she do? She was by the register in the business. You said that you had a religious home life. Can yes. you describe that? Well, uh, my father was a conservative Jew. He, he observed the, all the holidays and he prayed in the morning and at night. He never ate before. He didn't go to shul first. Describe the holidays and Shabbat. The Shabbat was beautiful. Every Friday, my mother used to, my mother used to prepare the bread, the holly, and the cake for the weekend. And uh, Friday night was beautiful dinner. And uh, he was quite religious because we didn't even put lights on. My mother wore a shaitl, and my father was also very religious. What kind of meals did your mother prepare for Shabbos? Oh, it was gefilte fish and soup and chicken and all kind of Hungarian uh, dishes, you know, like, like we had stuffed cabbage and paprikash and all these good food. Is that how she cooked every night, those kinds of foods? No, no, she did not cook all the same thing because we had a beautiful big garden and everything grew in a garden and we had everything in there from all kind of vegetable and fruit and my mother was a very big barbosta and uh, she took care of everybody. What kind of foods did she grow in the garden? What kind of Oh, we had, we had uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, radishes, parsley, carrots, corn, uh, potatoes, sunflower. We had wheat. We just had almost everything from the garden because my mother used to prepare it for the whole winter. In the summer, we planted it, and we used to put barrels of uh, pickles and and jars of lekwar, you know, and um, used to make jellies, and she used to make her own tomato juice. And she prepared everything through the summer for the winter. Who helped her in the garden? Well, the children used to help. All of us helped. And how big a garden was it? Well, it was a couple acres of land where we had wheat growing, cabbage was growing. After they took off the wheat, they, they had the plant ready already to plant it for the, for the fall because the cabbage came up then. They planted after the wheat, you know. And uh, we had almost everything. We had walnut, apples, plums, prunes, pears, and my mother used to cook that for the winter for for uh, lekwar, if you know what that is. What is that? Well, that's from prune. It's like a prune jelly, but it's not a jelly. It's a heavier. They use it for humantash here. <laughs> and how did your mother keep those foods for the winter? In jars. In jars. And they used to jar them. And what about the ve the fresh vegetables? How did she keep those? Well, the fresh vegetables, they after the summer, after the summer, they made a big grave like, and they used to put away the potatoes, and the carrots, and radishes, and all kind of vegetables, and they buried it with straw and dirt on the top and then when the snow came in kept it warm and they took it out in the spring just before the holiday before Pesach about four weeks before Pesach she opened up these graves and uh, she took out all the vegetables and made borscht for Pesach and she used to send everybody you know, for the poor people, she wanted them to have it. So she took a basket, she filled it up, and she told me, now go take it to this one and that one, you know. 
and uh, he shared almost everything with everybody. Even when we, even when we every Shabbos, if in Europe they used to have a goose for Shabbos, of course it was a fat goose because they used to fatten them for four weeks. And uh, when, we, when we took them to the shoichet, you know, to the to slaughter it. Then my mother used to, it was Thursday, she used to take part, part of the little goose and she used to tell me, you go over to Mrs. So-and-so and take it, let them have a Oynik Shabbos, a good Shabbos. And she used to share almost everything. She, was, she had a very good heart. And so did my father. My father was a butcher and uh, we weren't rich, but we were comfortable. And if somebody came to his butcher store and used to say, please, Mr. Gilbert, I don't have the money, but I need some meat for Shabbos. Do you know he used to give away the meat for them? And it came end of the week, you know, beginning of the week, and my father had to go to the market to buy more cattle. We didn't have the money because he gave out all the meat for free. So they were wonderful people. Very, they were very hard workers and very generous with others. My father would give up the shirt from his back for others, you know. And so was my mother. She was my, she, they were wonderful parents, loving parents. And, uh, and then the Nazis came in. We had a wonderful life. We had cattle, we had cows, we had, we had horses, we had chicken, ducks, everything. Everything actually was growing and having their like milk, butter, cheese, everything we had. So beside my father was a butcher. He made a living for other things. And uh, then till the Nazis didn't come in. When the Nazis arrived in 1944, April, just before Passover, and uh, when they marched into my town, uh, they right away, all the Jewish parents, they were looking for young women. And my mother had five daughters. You could imagine how scared she got. And my father, so my mother hided us behind the door in one room and she pulled the china closet to the door in case they're going to break in, they shouldn't find us because if they would have found us, they would have taken us away for the soldiers to the front. So Passover, my father was making Seder we hardly could have made the Seder, and the Germans were in town. And one night, we were hiding behind the door. A china closet was, as I said, pulled to the door that they should know it's a room there. The Germans broke the windows. My mother and father was sleeping, and they broke the door, and they said, they came, well, when they broke the door, my mother got scared, and she jumped out of the window, and so did my father, and started running. Started, and another Nazi grabbed them by the chest and slapped them left to right. I was just lucky that they didn't hit my mother. And they said, for Stunken Jude, where are you running? And my father said, I don't know but somebody broke into my house. And he said, now march in front of me and show me where you live. And he took them back to the house. Luckily, they didn't find us, you know. And they said to my mother and father, now go back to bed and don't you move. Then a day or two later, they came the Hungarian, it was no radios or televisions to announcing the trouble in the town, but they had a big drum. 
and they used to go in every corner of the street to, to tell the news. So they announced that, that all Jews should be ready by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And, and the, they didn't say for what, just be ready, what you have, you cannot take anything, you just, what you have on, that's the only thing you could come. So later on, the Nazis walked in to the house and uh, he said, rouse you there. And my mother and father marched with the children out and said, you stay on a sidewalk. And they locked the door behind us. We didn't have nothing. We were just the clothes what we had on. And my mother was afraid that what's going to happen to the children. A night before, she baked some bread. So she put it in a bag, and the Nazi says, what is that? And my mother said, bread for the children. So he let us get away with the bread, nothing else. And then they came with horse and buggy carriage, uh, uh, carriages, you know, the Hungarian people. They was announced everybody should line up their horse and wagon. And they, they packed us up on a wagon. First of all, first of all, uh, they, first of all, they put us in a temple to gather all the Jews from the town. Then they put us on a horse and wagon and they took us to a ghetto, to another city. It was, the name was not Sölisch. That's where we belonged to go. It was all wired in certain amount of streets and they gathered all the Jews in the ghetto. In the ghetto we was about about four weeks, not much food and not much water. And in each house it was about, was about four or five family pushed in, you know. So uh, we was in a ghetto for that certain amount of time. It was about four or five weeks. And then they, then what they did, the Nazis started taking us to the train station. They said, everybody should be ready. You can't take nothing. We didn't have nothing. You can't take nothing. Well, we didn't have, what did we have? Maybe a slice of bread or so. We suffered for five weeks without food there. And they took us out to the tra train station, and cattle cars was lined up. I don't know how many cattle cars. And they packed us into the cattle cars like, what was, I don't know even how many, 100 people. I know one thing, we couldn't even sit down because it was no room sedan, that's how they pushed us in. Filled up that cattle car, I don't know how many. And uh, they locked up the door. In the cattle car, it was a small little window on the top. And that's the only air we had. And for about two or three days, we were traveling without they should open even the door. You could imagine what people went through in that cattle car. But uh, then we traveled about three, four days, and then we arrived in Auschwitz. We didn't know where they take us. You couldn't even look out, only on a tiny little uh, slide of the door. And when we arrived in Auschwitz, they opened the cattle car. By that time, a lot of old people couldn't take it and even died or was unconscious. The babies were crying, mothers with children. Uh, my girlfriend who lived across the street from me, her mother had 13 children. And one was born just about four weeks before the Nazis took us. And only my 
my girlfriend survived from the 13 12 was killed guest and the mother and the father when we arrived in Auschwitz in the cattle car, uh, lots of people who couldn't come down, walk down, the trucks were lined up and they grabbed the children, even from mothers, you know, because a mother couldn't hold so many kids by the hand, you know. So they grabbed out the kids and threw them right, the babies, right on a truck with the old people, and it was so much crying, and, and just like potato sacks were. And then when the mothers came, you see, like my girlfriend had um, 13 children, so the older daughters were holding the children, the younger children's hand. So then the Nazi came and s announced it, women should go to the right, mothers with the children next to it, and the fathers and the sons in another lane, they separated us. So of course, my mother held my sister's hand. And her sister had two younger children who she held the hand. And the boys of hers went with the father. The girls remained with the mother, and the boys went with the father. And, and then they said, then they said, uh, line up five in a lane. And it was thousands of thousands. All the things was thrown all over and the Nazis were standing with the, with the guns, with the knife on the top. They call it, I think, bayonet. And uh, they kept beating these people with whips and guns, and, and, and it was so much crying, so much commotion, but they, must, they had to stay in the line as they told us. So we didn't know what's going to happen. I know my mother went with her sister and two kids, and my sister made five. And then I went with my two sisters who survived and a cousin in another lane, we made five again. So they took the mothers and the, the, mothers and the young children away to the gas chamber, to the crematorium. Did you know where they were going at that time? No, no, I didn't know, but at night when we arrived, uh, well, let me tell you, so, I separated from my parents. My father had no son. He went by himself to the man's side. And uh, when they told us to march, we didn't know where we go. And my mother was waving and screamed, don't worry, I will see you later. She kept going back. She kept turning her head and said, don't cry, I will see you later. I never saw my mother right after that. So they took us into a big hall and they told us to strip to the bottom for all these young girls. And they said everything should be taken off. Shoes, or the clothes what you had on, and then they made us sit down on a chair and they cut our hair, not only on our head, all over they shaved us. And then they gave us a gray dress, a, like a kimono, and a wooden shoe. And then they chased us again out of there, Raus, Verstunken, Judah, they were beating us and they put us in a barrack. By that time, so many people were in that lager. It was all wired, and on, a t on the four corners, or so many corners, were Nazis staying there with the machine guns up there. If somebody would run, well, you didn't have where to run, because once they took us into the lager, 
the big gate was closed. And but they were there day and night up there with a machine gun. Describe what the logger looked like. Uh, was big, long wooden barracks with shells like chicken coops. It was, it could be maybe four feet or five feet wide, but it was three layers, you know, three layers. And on both sides, it was, must be about 200 feet long, you know. And they locked us in there. And uh, they locked us in there, and uh, they said, move into the sh to these little coops, 10 in a coop. So it was three lanes, 30 in, in a coop, because I imagine you must have seen it on the movies already, what it looked like. And then a German Nazi stood outside and always like patrolling, kept going all around that just in case somebody comes out, he'll kill him. But nobody was going out because they was afraid. So they moved into these little coops where we couldn't even move. We couldn't even, just we had to stay on the side to sleep. It was five in the front, Five and uh, feet to feet, it was like. You what know. were you sleeping on? On a board. Nothing was there. No pillows, no blankets, no nothing. And then three o'clock in the morning, well, at that time already, we didn't know where our parents are. We, the only thing we heard, very much crying, whining, crying. And then we looked out on the little slab of the wooden barrack, and the whole sky was red from the flame. So right away we knew that it's no good. Because they lied that they're gonna take us to work in Germany. And the only thing we heard that night, and every night, not only that night, but I'm just talking about the night I arrived there. Terrible crying and screaming and praying and flames. It was as they were getting the people into the gas chambers, they kept taking them out and putting them into the oven 